Persona 3 is a hugely important game, not only to the Persona franchise, but also to my personal history with the Japanese style RPG genre. So when Atlas reached out with an offer to basically do what I was going to do anyway, only sponsored, I jumped at the opportunity. I am Super Derek, and this is the video I was going to make about Persona 3 Reload anyway, only now sponsored by Atlas. And now I'm going to do my best to answer the question that's been on my mind for ages. What is the definitive way to play Persona 3? I legitimately don't even know yet. I got so excited I actually wrote this part before I was even sent the key. So while I wait for that to arrive, let's get everyone some context here. Earlier when I said that Persona 3 is hugely important to me and the Persona franchise as a whole, that's not just lip service. Persona 3, when it was first released, was a pivot point in the franchise where Atlas made the bold decision to branch out from what they had been previously doing with the Persona series by blending in just the perfect amount of visual novel. It's also the kind of self-contained game that you can really go in completely blind and not miss anything, but it might contain some subtle nods to other entries for veterans who know exactly where to look. This title would obviously go on to inspire loads of other incredible titles across the industry, whilst simultaneously launching the Persona series into the stratosphere, cementing it as one of the legendary games that changed things forever. So legendary, in fact, that there were two more versions released of this game in quick succession, and each introducing new and exciting and exclusive features that make recommending the best version of the game uh, feel like an exercise in scaling Tartarus itself. Persona 3 Reload aims to be a creative reimagining, a faithful rebuilding of that world, a retelling of that incredibly heartfelt and powerful story, while in turn modernizing the game for a new audience some 18 years after its initial debut. Or in other words, reloading the game for a new audience to experience on Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Windows PC, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Steam. And best of all, it's available right now. Oh, hang on a second. I actually just got my review key. I'll be right back. For so. One montage later for you, but about 45 hours of gaming later for me, I've got some thoughts, and first impressions are really, really good. I think when it comes to making a remake, a good design should start the same way a good doctor does. First, do no harm. And I can assure you that from what I've played, Persona 3 Reload has done no harm to this beautiful game. It is retelling the story of Persona 3 incredibly faithfully to the point where even the script felt identical in many places to the original release, but not all. Upon diving into the social links, I found some bigger differences in the script, and considering the number of times I started playing Persona 3 in its various forms over the years, many lines were giving me heavy feelings of deja vu. I almost wished that they had played around with the text a little more, but at the same time I'm kinda glad that they didn't. The text is written with pure mid-aughts lingo that really captures the essence of the era, and attempts to go off script here might have missed the mark. Or in other words, this is a pretty solid time capsule as is, and there's a certain charm to that in and of itself. However, when it comes to newly introduced content, which I'll get into in a moment, the writing is seamless and feels genuine to the characters within. Another aspect of that time capsule worth talking about is that Persona 3 Reload deals with some pretty heavy themes. The evoker used to draw out a persona is shaped suspiciously like, uh, for the sake of YouTube content guidelines, let's say it looks kind of like the NES Zapper. And the act of drawing out that persona involves actions that resemble the characters treating their heads like a CRT television. What's next? I remember back when the game came out, certain publications gave this now legendary RPG some scathing reviews featuring the least charitable and most disingenuous interpretations of this aspect of the game as they could possibly muster. And I wouldn't be completely surprised if we see history repeat in some ways with Reload, because as we know, originality requires creativity. 
For the uninitiated, Persona 3's themes centralize on the concepts of confronting mortality, the meaning of life and death, and sacrifice. Themes of leaving your past self behind in order to find your true self, and the inclusion of those aforementioned aspects is not purely for shock value as might appear on the surface for people who haven't played the game. Instead, these are of symbolic significance to the story and are necessary for the game's vision as a work of literature and as a playable work of art. These themes are probably not able to be enjoyed by everyone for a variety of reasons, but not all games are for all people. Not even some of the greatest games, or perhaps in some cases, especially the greatest games. Persona 3 takes place in 2009 in an urban city of Japan called Iwatodai, a fictional city built upon an artificial island. And Iwatodai happens to be experiencing a phenomenon known as the Dark Hour every night at midnight. During this time, things stand still, powered electronics stop functioning, and monsters known as shadows roam freely. Most people don't know that this hour exists. They are unconscious to it. However, certain people do experience this hour and some of them are able to fight back against the shadows using their spiritual avatars, their persona, to perform combat. Our protagonist is particularly unique in this regard as they are able to wear many masks and establish strong bonds with many different people which in turn allows them to change their persona on the fly to better deal with the shadows as needed. In Persona 3, the protagonist and the other members of the Seas Task Force are tasked with investigating the Dark Hour and the ominous tower at the center of it all, Tartarus. One of the strongest aspects of any Persona title, especially Persona 3 and onward, is the incredible supporting cast and their story arcs and character development throughout. Persona 3 is now famous for achieving this by having a bit of a split personality, striking a balance between turn-based role-playing game and visual novel with relationship sim mechanics. By dedicating half or maybe even more than half of the game's playtime to interacting with a litany of well-rounded characters, the player will experience some really touching stories that play out for several fully realized characters. This was wholly innovative for the time, and Persona still leads the way to this day in this regard. The cast you'll encounter in Persona 3 Reload are the same friends and foes you might have met along the way during the game's original release, but the cast of voices have been shoveled around. I was a little disappointed, for instance, not to hear Liam O'Brien reprise his role as Akihiko, but getting to hear him play a cameo elsewhere was a nice nod and passing of the torch to his new voice actor, which was very nice. You didn't think we were in actual trouble, did you? Even if things got tense, I'd never put you in danger. Then why did we get a report from two ladies saying you were attacked by a group of punks? If you want to show off to your buddy, there's a time and place for it. All of the voices in this game are really nicely done in English, though Japanese voices are also available for fans of that option. And perhaps the best news of all on that front is that each of the social links appears to be fully voice acted from start to finish, which is an absolute wealth of extra lines that will help enrapture you in their stories. Something I want to say to you. Actually, I've wanted to say it for a while. I didn't think I had it in me, but I think I can do it now. Plenty of parts of the game are not voiced, but coming from the original releases, all of the added content is music to my ears. And speaking of the music, I'm absolutely in love with so many of the new renditions of Persona 3 classics, in addition to the remixes and newly crafted tunes that will surely get stuck in your head for hours on end, just like the good old days. I've been including a few of my favorites in the background here, and suffice it to say, I'll eagerly be anticipating the addition of these tracks to official streaming platforms whenever they become available. Graphically, Persona 3 Reload has really captured the mood of the original release perfectly. The visuals on my PlayStation 5 still reflect the design sensibilities of the 2000s classic while providing a much appreciated boost in visual fidelity. Higher resolution models and textures, perfectly animated characters, snappy UI animations. Persona 3 really did a lot of work back in the day to be a modern spectacle on the PlayStation 2 hardware and have cultivated a reputation since then of being absolute masters of avant-garde user experience design. 
To see them reprising their work after 18 years of experience of pushing that envelope has really been a treat to behold. Aside from the obvious visual and auditory overhaul, the next area of vast improvement to Persona 3 is in its gameplay. There are five difficulty modes available for players to pick up at its outset, and aside from the hardest difficulty mode, players can change the mode at any given point in the game to heat things up for a real challenge or to reel things back to just enjoy the story of the game. Historically, Persona 3 was one of the more difficult turn-based RPGs, and playing on normal mode now feels a bit easier than I remember the stock difficulty setting on Persona 3 Fess. One of the features many fans loved from Persona 3 Portable was the ability to play the female protagonist's route, which in addition to offering different social links, also upped the difficulty. So having two additional difficulty settings above the normal difficulty should at least be a small consolation for fans of that route for its difficulty, as that character's route is currently not an option in the game. However, as I've continued to play, I've found some newly added interactions between all of the members of the Seas that you can take part in during the evening hours. It's not quite as awesome as maybe being able to have social links with each of the members of the Seas, but these new events are nice enough on their own and eventually tie into combat bonuses and almost feel like their own social link event with a twist. But it really cannot be overstated just how many small quality of life improvements have been tucked into each inch of this game's interface. To name just a few of my favorites so far, when exploring Tartarus, once you've located the stairs to the next level, you can quick travel to that floor from anywhere on the floor. Quick travel is also available pretty much anywhere at all times during the day, allowing you to jump straight into a specific hallway at Gagokan High School or right outside of the Velvet Room at Polonia Mall. Selecting your destinations also pulls up a mini-map with active event markers, showing where you have social link events available with certain characters. You'll also sometimes receive texts from social links who are excited to hang out with you, and the maps will also highlight any important missable events. After school, you'll also receive texts from businesses, shops, and other opportunities inviting you out to participate in those events or to work at nights for some extra cash and stat boosts. In my opinion, one of the hardest parts about Persona 3 back in the day was keeping track of your social calendar, missing events or opportunities to advance relationships, but Persona 3 Reload has done a really great job of taking that burden off the shoulders of players who might be trying to juggle their own social links away from their screens. Fun fact, did you know that you can actually increase your Hermit social link right now by hitting that subscribe button? That's free XP right there. But one of the awesome new features that I've relied heavily upon these last few days is the rewind function. Mess up an answer in school and miss out on that stat boost? Give the wrong answer to a friend and now they're mad at you? Rewind back to yesterday from the menu and start the day over. It saved my bacon a time or two already. From my experience so far, Tartarus is still mostly the same Tartarus that we know and, well, let's be honest, tolerate. All 264 floors of it with 11 different blocks. The floors are each procedurally generated, consisting of rooms, hallways, plinths, dead ends, and treasures. However, things do get shaken up a little bit though. Before, Tartarus felt a lot like cube-shaped rooms and hallways, very boxy. Now though, at least some of the floors have taken on a much more organic shapes, depending on the block, which goes a long way toward making each block feel more unique. Things are also spiced up a bit more now though, as players are able to smash crystalline structures that often contain useful and sellable items, including Twilight Shards. Twilight Shards are a new item in the game that can be used to unlock the special chests of this version, and are also able to be used in exchange for party healing at key points in your traversal. Shards can also be found out and about outside of Tartarus as glowing blue spots on the ground, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for them, they just might save your life. Players also have the ability to dash in Tartarus, sacrificing stealth for some extra speed. Attacking shadows from behind outside of combat also vastly improves the flow of combat by giving you an extra turn of attacks, and landing those sneak attacks feels pretty easy to do too. Combat, which takes place exclusively during the Dark Hour, has the same one more combat system at its core as it was 18 years ago, but with sweeping interface changes and updates that remove the tedium and increase the speed and flow of combat. On the player's turns, you may select whether to use items, defend, attack using the equipped melee weapon, or to channel special attacks through their persona. Attacking an enemy's weak point allows you to knock them down and allows the player to perform a follow-up attack. 
Knocking down all enemies will result in the party being able to perform an all-out attack, during which all characters can rush in to give the shadows a good old-fashioned beatdown. The enhancements in Reload that I love most include the ability to hit R2 to essentially pass the baton to another party member once you've knocked down an enemy, so the other party members can perform actions instead of just the party member who knocked the enemy down. This makes it far easier for the player to slip into a good momentum in combat. When fighting weak enemies, you can also switch into a high-speed auto-battle mode, taking the button mashing out of the grind. Combat is also improved by taking those combat options I was referring to before and mapping them to the face buttons directly, reducing the number of layers of menus needed to navigate to perform certain actions, while also reducing the number of button presses total. Also, the players can automatically target an enemy's known weaknesses with the press of a button, which includes switching through your party members and personas automatically to make that all work. This quality of life feature might just be a little controversial for some, as it pretty much stops just shy of playing the game for you, but for a game that I've already sank hundreds of hours into before, the addition offers a crutch that I was more than happy to lean on. One completely brand new feature gets introduced about a dozen or so hours into the game, and it's a much welcome addition. It's called Theurgy. You can still set your tactics and control your party just like in Persona 3 Portable, but using Theurgy, your party members can fill a gauge by performing actions that they enjoy doing. Once that gauge is filled up, you can unleash a unique special move for each character, and it looks like you may be able to unlock more as the story continues. Theurgy is a fun spectacle that also saved my bacon a couple of times so far. Exploration of so many floors of Tartarus was one area that I was hoping to be reworked from the ground up. I really wanted things to be designed by hand and to have more obvious variations. I wanted there to be themes like what I saw in Persona 4, or maybe even larger, crazier designs like Persona 5. But because Tartarus was so central to the game, I can understand how messing with it now could undercut some of those same artistic and literary functions that I was defending only a few minutes ago. So with that in mind, I can't be too disappointed. And I can at least revel in the fact that some of these newly introduced features really help the floors fly by more quickly. I was astounded to realize that I ascended the first 20 floors of Tartarus in only a couple of short hours. In the added visual flair during combat, showing the warping, twisting, undulating walls and floors of Tartarus constantly shifting around makes for a really unique addition to the experience. So getting back to the question at hand, is Persona 3 Reload the definitive way to play that I always hoped for? Is it the new, perfect version of Persona 3 that I can recommend no matter what, no matter who asks? Let's recap. Persona 3 Reload first does no harm. It faithfully retells the story of Persona 3 almost too faithfully, but it does so while introducing a wealth of new voice acted content and vastly improved visuals. Musically, the game consists of solid throwbacks to the legendary game that precedes it, and only time will really be able to say if it managed to be as legendary in its own right. But at the very least, it's greatly enjoyable. Mechanically, the game is Persona 3, but features some well-crafted streamlining that helps round out the original game's roughest edges. Some exclusive content from previous versions are omitted from Persona 3 Reload, but they're compensated for somewhat by the inclusion of new difficulty modes. So, is Persona 3 Reload the definitive version that I've always asked for? Not quite. The omission of the answer and the female protagonist route will probably keep some fans pining over what could have been. I will not disregard the leaps and bounds over the improvements that Reload brings to the table though, and it is my personal opinion that the benefits that I've highlighted far outweigh those omissions. And when taken as a whole, Persona 3 Reload makes it very easy for me to recommend this version of the game above all others. Persona 3 is back, and to me, it's better than ever.